being here for this episode of Market Moves. My name is Eric White, alongside our Chief Investment Officer, Patrick Farrell, here to break down the market moving events of the last week. Namely, three pieces of key information came through this week. I'm just going to give it to you straight. Number one, the ECB increased interest rates in Europe by 0.25%. Number two, across the pond, US CPI figures came in hotter than expected. And number three, oil is trading at a 10-month high thanks to production cuts from Saudi Arabia and from Russia. But the question does remain, what is the impact on markets? Well, that is what Patrick is going to be telling us. Patrick, how's it going? Busy week? <laughs> <laughs> it has been a busy week, Erica. What sort of markets has has it got? What can you but, tell us? I mean, everything that you highlighted there was really the, the key focus for last week. The US CPI, let's start with that yeah. because that was really the focal point and that came out on the Wednesday. It was higher than expected, but surprisingly, there was actually relief. I think the market took relief from the fact that it wasn't as high, it wasn't, it wasn't going to be a number that was going to cause the Fed to basically hike rates again and to sort of change the whole dynamic that we've been seeing. At the same time, it wasn't great. Yeah. So it was higher than expected. And one of the sort of more interesting pieces coming out of it was a bit of a substantial move in gasoline prices. So gasoline prices were up over 10.5% for the month. So it, is, yeah. so it does start to come through in terms of the oil price moves that we've seen that you mentioned. Now, energy prices in general over the last year have been detracting from the overall CPI. So energy prices, with the fall in energy prices that's been taken away from the CPI, it's been one of the sort of key components in terms of why the CPI has been falling. But the dynamic now that we're seeing and probably are likely to see for the next few months is that we will see energy prices continue to escalate mm. and that is actually going to contribute to CPI going forward. Now, what does that all mean? It means that headline numbers for the US CPI and for other major areas, including the UK and in Europe, are going to see that energy contribution start to escalate. Yeah, that's not good news. For it's not good news. Um, it's not entirely bad news because there are a number of other parts of the CPI that we're seeing prices fall. The UK is a different story. And I think what we'll get um, coming out this week is the UK CPI and then the Bank of England meeting. Um, two very important Two very, very meetings, important. Yes. The CPI comes out before the Bank of England decide in terms of whether or not they're going to raise rates. So that will be an important consideration that we see when we're, when we're looking at that. However, the wages numbers that came out last week did highlight that the UK still has a problem with wages. Mm -hmm. They're still way too high. Um, they were accompanied though by some weaker employment numbers. So on the back of that, you know, it's it's actually the the higher interest rates are having an impact, a much greater impact on the UK than the same sort of move in the US. And I do think that the prospects of a recession coming through in the UK are so much higher now. Oh. So, so we have some painful periods ahead of us. The unfortunate thing is I don't think that's going to be enough to stop the BOE from actually hiking rates this week. Mm -hmm. I do think we will see a 25 basis point move. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, we are close to the top in terms of what that means for interest rates here. Lots of information coming through this week. Uh, what are the implications of these so moves look, going from forward? A, for, so from a market perspective, and this is this is really, really important, um, the, the move that we've seen in oil prices, and you very correctly pointed it out, so so far in September, oil prices are up 9%. From the bottom a couple of months ago, they're up over 20%. So we're in that situation where things are not going to turn around in that oil price dynamic. You know, those supply cuts that we that you mentioned means that the the balance between supply and demand currently with those supply cuts means that there are 200,000 barrels a day of higher demand than there is supply. Ugh. So what does that mean for markets? Well, it's anyone's guess this week in yeah. terms of what happens. 
A lot will depend on the UK inflation number and also the results of both the FOMC, which meets on Wednesday, as well as the Bank of England, which meets on Thursday. Um, there is expected to be a pause from the US, and I think that that's more than likely to be the case, but I actually do think it's a lot closer call than what the market is anticipating. Lots of big data last week, lots of big data this week. We'll have you back in the hot seat here to break it all down, what it all means. Patrick, thank you so much for all your expertise. Thanks, Erica. Today. Great.